All right, welcome to Dora Dunsey's 10th annual Oscar prediction special. We can hear all the latest in Oscar predictions with too many, way too many hosts with hopefully different predictions. I'm one of those hosts, David Allen, and another one is John Berwick, and the third one is Kyle Bridger. I will say that we are definitively the Oscars to our counterparts who are the Razzies. And I say oh. this with love, but you have lost every time. So I must say it. Yeah, they've had to watch a lot of Razzie films when they lose our Oscar prediction bet. But it's a new year. It's a, it's a whole new game. We have some guests tonight. We got to introduce them. The good, the bad, and the watchable. Guys, are you there? I'm Nick Boyle. I'm Nick Rojas. And I'm Mark DeSisto. And we're the good, the bad, and the watchable. Thanks for having us, guys. Of course, of course. It's not the Oscars without you guys. While it is our, our 10th annual prediction special for Dora Dunsey, it's actually our fourth annual bet with you guys. And it's the first time, actually, that we're adding in Mark. Uh, he wasn't there last year. Uh, so maybe that's your secret, like, lucky charm this time around. He did have to suffer the consequences of watching Cats last year. Uh, I did want to say that. I still had to sit through Cats. And yeah. that's like, I don't I'm, like to talk about it. I'm like punishment that was not deserved, I think. So he was an innocent bystander. We're sorry, Mark. Hey, you guys We're lost team. fair and square. Together. We're a team. Fair and square. Uh, tonight, we are going to break down and predict the very unpredictable 93rd Academy Awards that are going to take place a little late this year, Sunday, April 25th on ABC. And we are live on Twitch tonight. John is directing a video show, which will be on YouTube. We're going to predict the eight main awards. We'll tweet out the rest. Uh, and for our predictions, we like to do Will Wins and Dark Horses. It keeps things interesting. We got two points if you get your Will Win correct. And then you get one point for a Dark Horse win. And that makes it close. Last year, last year, guys, 27-25. 27-25 last year for a score. But... We have won three so far. Will this global pandemic finally shake things up for you guys? What do you think? Is this it? Is this your year? I'd say that, but I've said that the last three or four years. So I'm going to say, no, this isn't our year. <laughs> okay. I like our chances. <laughs> I, I think we could do it this time. I, I don't think we will. I honestly, um, um, I can't wait to have to watch Hillbilly Elegy. Can't wait. No. Oh. <laughs> is that the one? I think that could be. Something. That's a good one because that that is a film that is technically Oscar and Razzie nominated <laughs> in this Amazing. strange, in this very strange year. Um, this this year is very unpredictable for so many reasons, but especially I think the timelines of things. Every awards body is completely different timelines of when their actual voting was, when their ceremony was. The final voting for the Oscars this year is actually not even starting until this Thursday. So the voting hasn't even started yet for the awards we're about to predict tonight. That's a good thing wow. to listen to our show. So, there you go. Uh, there you go. Take us into account. Uh, <laughs> obviously, some so people that, with some good knowledge. We'll influence this. Yeah, we're, we're, I'm calling that. We influence the Oscars. <laughs> All, right. All right. Well. All right, so we have eight main awards tonight that we're going to break down. We should probably jump into it. Uh, we're going to do screenplay categories first, and we're going to start with best original screenplay. To keep things fair, I looked up the order from last year. We will reverse it tonight. Um, all of our picks have been locked in. John is our middleman here. Got all the predictions. He's keeping it straight. But best original screenplay. And I'll read off the nominees. Judas and the Black Messiah. Minari, Promising Young Woman, Sound of Metal, and The Trial of the Chicago Seven. Those are our screenplay nominees. So good, bad, and watchable. What is your will win in Dark Horse? All right, we'll start off with our Dark Horse, which Mark will introduce. Mark, our Dark Horse pick is... Drum roll, please. We select Minari. And Boyle, you have our will win. Which is the trial of the Chicago Seven. There we go. Aaron Sorkin mm -hmm. bring home an original screenplay when got up. Uh, yeah. No, I'd just like to say under protest for me, I didn't fully agree with it, but <laughs> I lost out on this decision. So we'll see. Yeah, yeah that, that's guys. that's always the tough thing with this, where it's like, 
like we always have to meet up beforehand. It's like, wait, these are what I'm thinking. This is what Kyle's thinking. Okay, we got to agree. And it, same with you guys. It's 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 very hard to get everyone on the same page, but it's it's a team prediction. We will say we have one of those films, but in a different slot. So we're already starting things off. Because normally I feel like last year it's like, oh, we match yeah. up. Mm. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah so up. I'm excited about this. We're already a little bit different. I like it. I like it. All right. Kyle, what, do, you, do you remember what our Will Win and Dark Horse is? You want to read those off? I don't because I am okay. amnesia, but I will read them off. <clears throat> so, um, so our Dark Horse, uh, which you guys had, uh, Trial of the Chica- Chicago 7. And our will win is Promising Young Woman. And um, uh, we just feel like, and Dave can back me up on this. um, We just feel like Promising Young Woman uh, might be a more exciting pick. um, And it gives the the director a little something here uh, because we think things might go a little bit differently later on. uh, but Trial of Chicago 7 is also, I think, another one where it's like this could be a they give this uh, they give them an award and it, it happens to be this one as opposed to other big awards that might come on. Uh, Dave, do you want to add on to anything yeah. that I missed? And I'm already going to apologize in advance. Uh, Mark's new to this. I have so many stats, figures, research that you're just going to be like, all right, enough, enough, uh, professor. I get it, but yeah. Okay. With the analytics right? <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> talking film here. <laughs> exactly. But I I'd say with promising young woman, like, like Kyle said, it's an exciting pick. And I feel like this category can lead to excitement. You get a lot of these films that are like these one-off wins. You get her one here, get out one here. Um, so they sometimes will give something like maybe this is your one award of the night. I don't know if that's going to spoil things for Link may or may not but then also promising young woman did win the writers guild award it won a bafta this weekend and won the critics choice for screenplay so it it has picked up some hardware the one thing it missed out on is the golden globe which did go to aaron sorkins that's why we picked dark horse of charles chicago seven they don't split up adapted and original so all the screenplays were in this category and when you're when you're talking screenplays Sorkin is usually a safe pick because between him and Tarantino, that's them. It's the, the, you know, Aaron Sorkin Memorial Award someday. This will be, yeah. so, so that's where I think we're, we're kind of leading. We're kind of going one exciting one kind of, uh, yeah. I like that. Old reliable. just showed me the betting odds. Oh, what are um, the betting odds? Uh, whatever. So, uh, Promising Young Woman was... Uh, yeah, Promising Young Woman right now on Odds Checker, which, mm. uh, you know... Uh, you know, Two to that, five odds. It has that two to five odds Pretty right good. now. So you'd have to bet 500 to win 200. Um, so mm. not exactly. I, that's, I like that's, those that's odds. Cool. <laughs> I love those <laughs> odds. The juice is there. Safe, yeah. safe <laughs> invested. This is uh, how I win. Charlie Chicago 7's 3-1. to one. Uh, You know, you could parlay both of them losing. I don't know, maybe Adam Sandler from uh, Uncut Gems would bet something like that. <laughs> Uh, opening tip, um, but yeah, so right now the odds on favorite is promising young woman in that category. Could that change over the next few days? Who knows? But that's that's a fun pick. That's a fun pick. I just yeah. I just love that you guys went to the odds makers and Mark was probably like, I just took a BAFTA, but show me the odds <laughs> on this. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what a BAFTA <laughs> is. I think I just took one, but. <laughs> Back to this. I don't know. We, I, we were big fans of Promising Young Woman. Yeah. Loved it. Well, yeah. And that's how it's going to be a lot of it tonight where it's like, you know, some of these are not are not going with our heart. It's going with our head. And that's where it's it's tough. Someone's like, oh, I, I didn't like this film, but it's going to win. So that's mm-hmm. the thing. But... Chicago, Chicago 7 is our will win. Mm-hmm. Not the biggest fans, but, <laughs> I like it. but yeah. I, I We've gotten in trouble the last few years when we go with our heart. So mm. Okay. Okay. Well, let's, let's move in now to adapted screenplay. You guys are going to read off the nominees first. What do you got for adapted screenplay, the nominees? All right. For adapted screenplay at the Oscars this year, first one we have is Borat subsequent movie film. Next up after that is, oh my gosh, so many writers for that movie. The Father, Nomadland, One Night in Miami, and The White Tiger. So, guys, who do you have for your Will Win and Dark Horse in that category for adapted screenplay? 
Okay. So I think yeah. one is pretty much, I, it has to match with you. I think it's, I, I'd be surprised if it doesn't match. And the other ones is kind of a fun one that who the hell knows it's a crazy year are will win Nomadland, but our dark horse is I want to see if I can get the full title of this film because it is, if the film wins, will be printed on an Oscar statue. Uh, if, if I can pull it up here, I'm doing it live on the podcast. It is Borat subsequent movie film delivery of prodigious bribe to American regime for make benefit once glorious nation of Kazakhstan. I'm sorry, I didn't quite get that. <laughs> One more time. Borat two. All right. <laughs> oh, okay. I wasn't sure. It, that would be a fun win. And Sasha Baron Cohen has a writing credit, so he'd be on stage for that, right? Yeah, he would be on stage. The original got a nomination this year. It got two nominations uh, for the screenplay and for supporting actress. So it's it's getting better and better at the Oscars. But uh, be- before I say why, I want to hear what you guys think. Okay, Boyle, your- do you want to read our adapted screenplay, Will Win and Dark Horse? Sure. Uh, our Dark Horse is... The Father. I watched that today. That's true. You did. So uh, that kind of ruined my afternoon. <laughs> it's a great movie, but like, tough. I was saying this one day. I'm I'm sick of these people making the best movies on the planet. I'm like making me watch these for the Oscars. <laughs> it, was, it was very high quality. You can always get one. And just our, took the momentum right out of me this afternoon. And our will win. <laughs> just keep it moving. No map land. Mm-hmm. For, yeah. for a win, will win. Yeah, I feel like this one is the the dark horse. Maybe doesn't matter as much because I feel like the will win is no map land. I I think it's pretty yeah, locked I mean, up. Yeah. Um. The only reason we kind of gave Borat some love is is it won a, a Writers Guild uh, award for screenplay in this category. Um, I don't think No Man Land was eligible there, but Borat still beat like Marini's Black Bottom, News of the World, One Night in Miami. It beat you know quite a few other films that are nominated in different categories. So that's kind of why we went with that. But I've been if I had to tinker with anything and change anything, I think The Father is a good dark horse pick um want to go any reason with that one yeah i still just want sasha baron cohen to to win and just you know everyone's going to the oscars being like oh hoity-toity and we have this guy coming in who is like i just did some weird stuff with rednecks in the (laughs) middle of god knows where (laughs) you know what i mean it's just wild to me Almost was killed. Yeah. Uh, yeah. In, no big deal. Yeah. So sorry. Sorry to Francis McDormand who uh, used the bathroom in, a, in an RV. That's a boring prank. hiding in an RV. Well, that, I mean, that's not impressive. We've all, you know, used to fuck it in an RV before. So. <laughs> Don't be something I haven't seen, okay? I haven't yeah, you want an Academy yet. Award for that? All yeah. right. Yeah. <laughs> Usually I get yeah, call kicked it out. <laughs> yeah. No, I, it's, it, yeah, it might not be worth. You know, debating. I mean, uh, you know, the odds are the odds right now. Yeah. But, you know, similarly, Nomad Land's like a, a, a two to five favorite. I mean, the father is eleven to two right now, so mm. that could sneak in. You know, you could make a little bit of a nice chunk of change on this. But I, I mean, I think Nomad Land's going to win this. I, yeah. I don't think anybody else in the category really has a chance besides those three films we mentioned. I don't know. Do you guys think any any of those steal those other two? Uh, I I don't think so. I I think th- I mean the White Tiger. I mean is it's. Maybe it's only nomination. Maybe there's another one in there I'm, I'm missing somewhere else. Like it didn't really get in anything else, which is not normally a, a great sign if, if you only have one nomination. Like there's not that other support for your film in there. But yeah, the, the thing that is against Borat, uh, which is interesting because it did win the WGA, is there are nine screenwriters here. That's a lot of people for a film that is, again, largely improv. I mean, I know there's a lot of work that goes involved. This, kind of make all these little pranks and storylines all coherent and make sense into a movie. But like, I mean, will, will the Oscars, yeah, award a film with that many screenwriters for a film that's many people assume is just largely improv. But stranger things have happened, so. Absolutely. It's a fun story that it got here, but it looks like the story might be ending uh, relatively <laughs> soon, so. <laughs> All right. Don't say it, man. Don't say it like that. I give it like little to no chance. I, no. 
Yeah. yeah it's it's no man land. So I, I, don't, I, think I don't think so. Boy. Okay. No, I know. Yeah. All right. Honesty goes a long way. <laughs> it's all good. No, I, I appreciate <laughs> it. All right. We're going to go to um, best supporting actor now. And I think Kyle's going to read off the nominees if he has them up. Supporting, supporting actor. actor, you said? Yes. Yes. Okay. So, uh, best supporting actor uh, Sasha Baron Cohen in The Trial of Chicago 7. Daniel Kaluuya, I probably butchered that, but Judas and the Black Messiah. Leslie Odom Jr. for One Night in Miami. Paul Racy for Sound of Metal. And Lakeith Stanfield for uh, Judas and the Black Messiah. All right. Let's see. What do you guys have for a Will Win and Dark Horse? All right. So for actor in a supporting role, for Dark Horse, we have Sasha Baron Cohen and Mark. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and me. I, I, wow. I, I, Mark, Congrats. Our Will Win, our Will Win we have... Daniel Kaluuya from Judas, Judas and the Black Messiah, which I, I mean, I think he's a lock for this. So I, I'm, I'm assuming that we're all going to be on the same page for this. Yeah, uh, we'll toss it to you guys. We'll though. toss it to you guys. Yeah. That's, that's the way I'm feeling. All right. So for our supporting actor, we match up. Moving on to supporting. <laughs> <I'm just kidding>. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. Um, Will win. Daniel Kaluuya, Dark Horse, Sasha Baron Cohen. I think it, it, this, there's there's four acting categories. I think two of which locked up, two of which eh, could go any which way. This is one of the ones that's it's locked up. Daniel Kaluuya is going to win an Oscar for Judas and the Black Messiah. Kyle, you think so too? Yeah, and I mean, I I think uh, it's a shame that Lakeith Stanfield is in this category. He should be in the the best acting category, and I think he would have a good shot in that category as well. Uh, so it's just it's just weird that they decided to both do supporting actor here, and that one of them is go- probably going to win at the detriment of the other. But yeah, I mean, looking at some of the stuff he's already picked up, he's won Critics Choice, Golden Globe, BAFTA, and SAG, and while it is the weakest of the four SAG awards, uh, it's still 66% of the time, it works every it time. It works every time. Yeah, and, baby. Um, <laughs> there we go. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so uh, wh- why did you guys pick Sasha Baron Cohen? We did as well, but I wanted to get your guys' thoughts on that. Well, you can speak to this because you really like the movie a lot. What do you like about his performance? I just thought he did a really good job of um, keeping it lighthearted but then also when it needed to be, he was serious and put up a good performance. So, um, yeah. Dark Horse, I feel like, is always our risky area. Like, let's throw up someone who's still possibly going to win because of the publicity, I feel like. Uh, but I think still anytime- also deserves yeah. some recognition for his performance. I thought he did a good job. I thought he kept it good and fun and entertaining for myself. Like, so the performance, like, I get what he was doing, and it's definitely, like, a flashy performance in a, in a somewhat serious story. Mm-hmm. And I feel like that's, like, catnip for Oscar voters. Like, oh, you know, he was being funny and edgy to the man, you know? And how, how we felt about the movie is one way. How, how we think that mass audiences feel about Sasha Baron Cohen in that movie is another mark. I think it's a popular performance. I thought it was popular for the wrong reasons. Um, mm-hmm. I didn't like it personally. Again, this is another one of the picks where I didn't fully agree. Um, yeah, I it just didn't. That's why you put a dark horse. Yeah, it, it is yeah. definitely a dark horse, but I see the reason where like, you guys are coming from. Um, I actually think it's the opposite of Oscar bait worthy. I think it was kind of the pick that they threw in that was a lot like Robert Downey Jr. in Tropic Thunder, Thunder where it's mm-hmm. like, this was fun. We know where it's coming from. They're, you're not going to win, but you're nominated. Mm. Oh. To, so. to toss it to you guys, Daniel Kaluuya, one to fourteen odds, so mm. I have to put down fourteen hundred bucks to win a hundred. Yeah. So mm. yeah, that's better than a savings account right now. <laughs> so if you open, uh, it's a stimulus, just, right? If, if I can, just for my personal dark horse, not the yeah. team, just you know, just a personal one, uh, Paul Racy. Yeah, that, that'd be Metal. that's one of the the heart picks. That's I would. It's a heart pick. Yeah. I loved him in Sound yeah. of Metal and. I mean, looking at this category, I do actually like this category. In One Night in Miami, Leslie Odom Jr. was one of my favorites oh. in that film. Lakeith Stanfield, as we mentioned, is great as well. So it's like this, 
a lot of great performances in this category. That's what you normally get in the supporting category. You get a lot of, you know, great performances. We went with, with Sasha just because, I mean, there wasn't much to go off of because Daniel's been winning everything, but Sasha was part of that ensemble win at Screen Actors Guild. They won Best Ensemble, so he's a part of that. And there's been a lot of attention, I feel like, to him. I've seen him everywhere just because, obviously, he's promoting this. He's promoting Borat. So he has a lot of stuff going on, and I feel like he's just in the public conscious so much, you know, more so than Paul Racy. I mean, I don't know how many interviews he's doing that is being widely seen. So Maybe zero. <laughs> I haven't seen him. So, so. yeah. All right, uh, let's now move to Supporting Actress. Uh, you guys will read off the nominees for Supporting Actress. I believe that's me. Here you go, Mark, congrats. There you go. Oh, this will be a good one. All right, as we said, Best Supporting Actress, Maria Bakalova, or a subsequent movie film. Glenn Close, Hillbilly Elegy. <laughs> Olivia Coleman, The Father. Amanda Seyfried, Mank, Yun Yu Jung from Minari. Well, those are the nominees. Yeah. There you go. There you nominees. go. There you go. Nice work. Nice work. Yeah. Uh, we have to reveal oh. our Will Win and Dark Horses. This is, I think, one of the tougher ones of the week. I'm feeling a little bit better as of Sunday because there were some late awards push for this person. But who do we have for our Will Win and Dark Horse, Kyle? For Dark Horse, uh, we have Maria Bakalova. And for Will Win, we have Young Yung Jong, but that's our Will Win from Minari. Um, yeah, I think I think she got a very nice boost from the SAG Awards. She won in supporting actress. She also got the BAFTA on Sunday, and that was right before I locked in picks. So I saw that there. Okay. 70% of the winners from SAG win here. Voting hasn't started yet. I feel like between SAG and BAFTA, that's a very good timing to get, you know, start getting your buzz going. Uh, so that that's good for her. Um, I have some more thoughts on Maria, but we'll 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 talk about that after we hear your guys' picks. I'll read our picks because I emailed John separately from what we wrote in the Google Doc. <laughs> it, I was panicking. I know, I know. We wrote for our <laughs> Dark Horse, Glenn Close, which Mark instantly vetoes. I veto too, so <laughs> I, I'll get into it after okay. I say okay. why. I, okay. I want to defend the Dark Horse before. Neither of us agree. The will win, we're going to say Yun, Yun Jung Yun from Minari. Okay. Uh, reason why I want to defend the Dark, Dark Horse pick is because everyone was so excited about Glenn Close a few years ago, and then they gave it to Olivia Coleman, yeah. right? favorite. And now Glenn Close is getting up there in age. No disrespect, but I could see older voters going, you know what? Let's honor our gal Glenn Close. Ah, Glenn Close, she did a great job. I, I see my time. I know why <laughs> people are upset at me, but that's all I have to say. Yeah. The only way I will like accept that is if she wins the Razzie. Yeah, if she wins both I think she's in the same weekend. The she's I think she's a mortal lock. Because the in the past, there has been actresses who have won the same weekend but for a different performance. I believe Sandra Bullock won for some whatever film for the Razzies Something and then Steve. won for The Blind Side the next night. Oh, really? So it's happened, but it's, I don't think it's ever happened for the same exact performance. Never. Uh, so, <laughs> so that would be I historic. There was never a time when the nominees were like the same role, both <laughs> an Oscar and a Razzie, yeah. which to me is just yeah. Do you think Glenn Close posts like on your social media, like history was made tonight? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I mean, because there is something to the storyline of Glenn Close still has never won, which is crazy. She has so many nominations and the Oscars love to do the thing where, oh, you should have won for this award, but we screwed up that year. So we're going to make do on this one and you won't actually deserve it for this film, but you deserved it back. There. Like, you know, I feel like. Okay, I don't want to get into a huge dis discussion on this is the first one I thought of. You with, look beside yourself right now. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to get to a huge, uh, you know, dramatic fight here between Leonardo DiCaprio with The Revenant. Great, good performance. Is it his best? He had six other performances probably before that that he should have won the Oscar for, but it's like, oh no, it, it's your time. You just, you, you got to win it now. Same with like Brad Pitt, you know, for Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Oh, it's, it's just, it's your time. Your time's up. You're ready. Let's go. And could that happen with Glenn Close? 
I don't know. I, hope not. I, I don't know. <laughs> but we, we said going no. into this, we weren't going to be happy about certain things winning, but we'd be more upset with certain things winning. Mm. That's we're, fair. we're not fans. We're haters this year. <laughs> yeah. 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 That is for fair. Team, we're just we're rooting yeah. against this yeah. <laughs> so we We're rooting right. against ourselves. Yeah. yeah. Basically, yeah. But for, for, for our dark horse, we did put Maria Bakalova. Yeah. Um, Which I I really would like to see yeah. her win. I mean, I thought anytime you got to act with sweaty Rudy about to <laughs> pull his pants down on you, I mean, you got to be. Concerned. Allegedly. <laughs> Allegedly by video <laughs> only. Okay. Alleged yeah. that he was sweaty. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's, that's what the. Yeah, but I'm sure. I mean, to go toe to toe with Sasha in something you've never done before with with improv, nothing. it's like yeah, it's pretty impressive to me. So uh, I like the Maria pick, but I I, I love Olivia Coleman. But oh yeah, I, as you guys heard, I just watched the father. Not involved that much. I don't think they're no, enough to there, get right? this award. Yeah. Yeah, I, I worry also it, that I just she kind just of assumed, won. Like, all right, she's yeah. probably doing this just to get the award. That's but not enough. When she when, when she won, Dave, was that for yeah. best actress or supporting actress? I think it was for best actress because I think she was yeah competing against Glenn Close, who was the wife. This time, Olivia Coleman's the father. That's her film. So <laughs> could we get could we get something going on there? But uh, yeah, I mean, Olivia Coleman, I feel like just won. So that's why who knows? Stranger things have happened. But and Maria Bakalova is. A newcomer so it's like oh are we gonna yeah. go to glenn close who's a veteran or are we gonna go to maria bakalova who's new but a, a cool stat i did see um she won critics choice uh, you have to go back 13 years to find the last critics choice winner that didn't win the oscar in this category and then also she's the only person in this category to have gotten at least nominations at the baftas critics choice sag and golden globes so she's the most nominated person in this category so Maybe that'll help her at least a little bit. I don't know. I mean, knowing that, I mean, it's pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> like, I, I think that really kind of She's got some history on her sides there. Wow, I feel really. Who's the idiot that put Glenn Close in the dark? <laughs> so mad. <laughs> Who was that guy? Wow. Where is he? We're gonna find him. Give me the open bar. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that was our like our back and forth dark horse. We kept going back between Maria and Glenn. So yeah. Um, but if you uh, are to read any of like those. Hollywood Reporter, like honest Oscar. It's like these dudes are eighty years old. They're like doing chores, and they're like, "Oh, I gotta, I gotta fill out my Oscar ballot." And it's just like, take it to the. It's just, so I'm. I'm gonna, I'm gonna pull up the one that I, I said Kyle earlier. Uh, this is what this person said about the father. Sony Classics always sends their stuff early. It was excellent. <laughs> <laughs> Cool. Paid for that? So you got the DVD and you watched it. Wow. Great. And like, <laughs> was, it, was it you guys talking a few episodes ago about how Alec Baldwin was talking about how most people who are in the Academy, they, they watch like they scan through the movies yeah. really quickly. To if see if, if that, there. yeah, that's just, they're, they're not watching like that watch. same person went down their list. and was like, well, in this category, I haven't seen this film, this film or this film. I didn't want to see this one. So I guess my vote is going to be for this one. <laughs> it's like well if you don't want to do this there's six people on this podcast that are willing to do it for you <laughs> like, and already did oh my God. Yeah, we, we did it we went through our <laughs> yeah there's like there's people in like college that plan like an oscars party to like get like drunk yeah and that's how they pick they're like oh well i guess i only saw two of these so i guess yeah. i'm gonna pick one of those oh, boy. <laughs> that, that's what kyle and i did before the podcast yeah <laughs> honestly <laughs> we had a dartboard and we were just throwing them there. but um all right let's move now to best actor uh we'll read off the nominees i believe it's my turn to read them off so let's see we have best actor riz ahmed for sound of metal chadwick boseman for Ma Rainey's black bottom anthony hopkins for the father gary oldman for mank stephen young for minari all right here so best actor We'll win Dark Horse. Where are we going, guys? Uh, for Dark Horse, we're going Anthony Hopkins, my favorite. But I also love the, <laughs> the will win as well. I don't know why I said that. <laughs> uh, the will win, I'm taking both. Chadwick Boseman. We thought both of them just put up an absolute performance, and we'll talk more after you guys give your picks. All right, so we have one that matches. 
Uh, Kyle, what matches and what doesn't match? Uh, okay. So we, uh, the one that matches is Chadwick Boseman and we can talk about it. I think everything else in this category doesn't matter because he's going to win it. I mean, I think it's just, it's just, I want to see the odds on this one. It's got to be like one to a thousand. It's ridiculous. But, um, our dark, uh, our dark horse is, uh, Riz Ahmed. And I think, uh, this one for Dave and I is more of a heart pick because we really like the sound of metal. Um, and we thought he did a really good job with it. Uh, just the transformation along the way. And then I think the the, even with the ending scene, it leaves you with that film really left me with something like it's, it, it, it changes perspectives I feel like. And so I wish that movie got more love, honestly. Yeah. Just yeah. So, cause it was such a weird award year. That movie was released, I think, early December, I want to say, or mid-December, right? And here we are now. It's it's approaching mid-April, you know, and, and momentum is just... Because after that movie came out, I was like, wow, that was like a really solid Oscar movie. And then just as quickly as it came, it left. And I don't think people have had serious Sound of Metal conversations since Christmas, mm. honestly. And, mm. and, you know, now I, you know, now you kind of get why Oscar voting is when it is. And it's, you know, it's people just get forgotten just like that. And... Uh, yeah. You know, yeah. that's why I give a lot of credit to anybody who's nominated this year, just being able to mo- just maintain momentum for as long as they've had to mo- maintain. I mean, it's it's insane. But I haven't seen Ma Rainey's Black Bottom, but I just know the narrative is that Chadwick Boseman is going to win. Boyle's seen it. Have you seen it? Yeah. Oh, oh my God, you guys. Sorry. If it's not nominated <laughs> for Best Picture this year, I'm, I got It is such a performance. But I mean, that's why I also went with our Dark Horse, though, too. I thought both of them put on a performance that the movie itself you just were like nah it was all them they did so much like you were saying with olivia coleman she disappeared and i just thought anthony hopkins deserves so much credit but chadwick boseman also put on such a character development role of a roller coaster really yeah i mean i think everyone should see that movie i really do i was hesitant on both of these movies and was completely just surprised by how much I enjoyed both of them. I will say that the thing I had issues with with Moraine's Black Bottom and uh, One Night in Miami is just, I mean, they're, they're movie plays. They're just, it's just such a, it's a play that's put on for the screen. However, the performances in, in both of those films is what makes it stand out. Whether, you know, with uh, Moraine's Black Bottom, you have Chadwick, you have Viola Davis, you have Coleman Domingo, who's a favorite of mine. Mm-hmm. So the ins- entire ins- ensemble is great. It's So I like the acting more than the actual film, if that makes sense. But this is Chadwick's. I mean, this is, he won the Critics' Choice, he won the Golden Globe, the SAG, so many others. And this is one of the strongest, I think, SAG stats. Over 80% of the time, they win. 15 of the last 16 winners here, match. So it's, it's Chadwick Boseman, the Dark Horse, it's if you asked 20%. me, we, we, we locked him in on Sunday. If you asked me maybe Monday, I might have changed it to Anthony Hopkins. Uh, I feel like he's picking up some, some steam, but I don't think it's going to be anywhere near Chadwick Boseman. I don't think there's going to be enough for yeah, that. I, there. Do, I completely agree. I think it's, it's Chadwick Boseman's yeah. award to lose. He's all you can see, even though I haven't even watched the movie. You <laughs> see it everywhere. All you yeah. see... Mm-hmm. <laughs> the internet commercials whatever every, every update every article he's gonna win it but anthony hopkins what a performance i mean that was he was captivating it was emotional is that um, movie angry, worth it i'm gonna have to see the father now huh? a little bit. that's the one it i'm was, missing is it, if, so- you, if you feel like you have to watch all the best picture nominees sure you, i think yeah. you have to but personally it's it's gonna get shut out of every award i think not if it wins this dark see- horse I'm going to tell you, it's a tough point. subject matter <laughs> and it's very emotional and yeah, I'm not gives okay you perspective. Right now. <laughs> it's, that's it's why I think you should watch it. <laughs> Boyle's I'm not insightful saying, tonight. Yeah. Yes. I just want to like, I want yeah. you to understand that it's, it's, a, it's a tough movie. I thought that there were a few tougher movies this year mm. that were like, you know, Pieces of a Woman. We'll get to that later. You know, I know mm. that's up for something. So, yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, there's a lot going on. 
Right. I can tell it's hard on Mark. He's uh, drinking already, so <laughs> it's, like, uh, this is a rough one. Like, uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, His but... text twenty minutes in was, "Geesh." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I didn't. I didn't have a great time uh, getting through that movie, but wow. but the performances were just uh, nothing short of fantastic, and you have to appreciate the art and the effort that goes into something, especially with the uh, subject matter as, as tough as that. Um, again stop making movies so sad i don't want to do that anymore <laughs> I, yeah. I gotta say that i'm uh more into watching it now after boyle's yeah. recommendation so i mean i'm more likely to watch it now i feel like yeah please quote you just need to go poster. in knowing like this is a rainy day movie like don't go in expecting great huge <laughs> no things. you need a sunny day because you're yeah. gonna want to go outside after and play. Mm. be happy yeah we gotta move on. I was gonna, yeah. <laughs> hold on don't watch this on a sunday night don't do oh it. god no sunday scary do yeah it's a tough movie but all it's right. great acting all right well should we move on to best yeah. actress best actress let's, best actress let's do it. i'm gonna motor through viola davis andre day vanessa kirby francis mcdormand and carrie mulligan that's your best actress on these guys who are your dark horse and who is your will win all right this was the one we had it pretty much mm. between three changing out into each one. Oh, this is a will win this is a dark horse no will win dark Three different people kept switching around. I think this might be the toughest of the night. I was saying earlier that there's four acting categories, two of which are kind of unpredictable. I think this is the hardest one of the four. Uh, uh, I don't know. I don't know. I'm stressed. Our, yeah. Uh, I'll do one, Kyle. You do the other. I'll say Will Win, Viola Davis, Dark Horse, Kyle. Uh, Carrie Mulligan. Oh, oh, thank goodness. Oh, thank God. We're thank goodness. The same? We're the same. We're, we're, the same. Same. we're all good. <laughs> we, we we good. <laughs> uh, yeah, but yeah, we, we can go in on this. Guys, I mean, they could be any of the three. Oh, they, uh, Dave, I know you have the stats. I think yeah. all three of them have taken home hardware or, yeah. or, or have taken hardware this season, I think. Yeah, I believe the only person that hasn't won anything yet is Vanessa Kirby. Uh, Andrea Day won the Golden Globe, which you can't really count on the Golden Globes. Uh, they're just too, eh, not important. Um, but Viola Davis got the SAG Award, uh, recently got that. Um, they, they love her, five other wins, and they, SAG usually matches. Uh, so that's, that's a good indicator. That's what made it our will win. As for the Dark Horse, it was really Carrie Mulligan, Francis McDormand, back and forth, back and forth. Carrie Mulligan won the Critics' Choice, National Board of Review. She's won a bunch of other things. And I think the one thing that helps her is in this category, if you look at some of the past history, they like to give it to a film that's like, it's like, this is your one award. This is your one thing in uh, Still Alice, Blue Jasmine, Iron Lady. And just last year with Judy, they gave Renee, Renee Zellweger, you know, best actress. And that was it. That's it. And so I think this could be, Okay, Carrie Mulligan, Promising Young Woman. There you go. Um, and I just think Francis McDormand's stock has kind of gone down a little bit. She did get the BAFTA on Sunday. That did help her, but she just won an Oscar like two, three years ago. She just won. She already has two. So that's our thoughts. I hmm. think, no, you speak for us. No, I speak for you me. Saw, <laughs> you saw Marvin <laughs> Black Bottom. I was going to say, it's another category you have to take. Yeah. I don't think Viola Davis deserves this. I, I know. I, yeah. Well, well she's the second. I did tell you. Right I texted now. it to you. Shut I fired. Think... I'm tweeting oh. it right now. <laughs> Shots fired. If Carrie Mulligan wins, I'll be happy. If Vanessa Kirby wins, I'll be happier. That's I know we didn't even you pick know that. It. Stop doing it. I did. That's fantasy picking. I'm going to tell you. Right I know now. she's not going to win. <laughs> <laughs> no, she I don't see Viola Davis's performance in that movie to be winner out of all of these but people. see but you saw it i'm just exactly. reading the stats hmm. well you're, yeah. you're, i'm reading the stats i'm telling she's, you first she's one sad to me that was the tipping point i can't yeah. believe she won see th th this is what's gonna happen this is boyle's fantasy pick because he really wants it and then he's gonna be disappointed when it doesn't happen I'm okay and there's that. no one to be mad at but yourself so because you so made this so i made the right this choice. Is your fantasy pick. i made the choice nobody I told you that like she had and a chance kirby Put it all. Put Boyle was going to do Vanessa Kirby too. Boyle was going to do She's not going to win. He was going to write in someone else. He's like this. Vanessa Kirby is exactly what you were talking about, Dave. 
that's like to me she's gonna t- like if they're gonna give an award they're gonna give this award to them to highlight i mean it's I'd possible be, that's the I'd only shocked the nomination but i wouldn't hate it yeah, it's, I'm telling you. She hasn't won. In terms of trying, she hasn't to won know, anything yet. That's the one thing that that stopped me. I mean, then again, everyone's won something. She's missing one thing. Maybe the one thing she gets is the Oscar. In a year like this, I mean, it's like okay, well, this person won this, this, and this. They cancel each other out. What's left? Oh, it's it's like, I don't know. But yeah, I just, I think. I think it's just between Viola Davis, Carrie Mulligan, and and Francis McDormand. I I don't think Andrea Day really has a shot i feel like people didn't like that movie and the golden globe was a complete surprise uh and, and as you said before golden globe who cares yeah <laughs> it's, it's a dollar store award show everyone knows yeah. it so yeah. i really I, I like vanessa kirby just as yeah. an actress we, like she's great whoa, in the crowd we, 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 i'm gonna tell you fans. her performance Big her fans. performance in this movie love vanessa was kirby. marriage story status okay. that is cool okay you know From, you're kind of, <laughs> unless unless there's a meme of Vanessa it's Kirby like punching that. a wall, not marriage story worthy. <laughs> not it. Yeah. I didn't see a single. It's meme. like that though. Oh, I'm okay. saying you're dealing with a real. We gotta yeah. we gotta move on. Intense. Okay. We gotta move on. I, I need I need Roas every week on the podcast. We need to move on. We I just need that as a sound clip. Let's oh, like wrap week, it up. Every time we do an episode, yeah, I'm just looking at the like, oh god, this is gonna right. be a three hour episode. It's okay. We got two left. We'll spend more time with with picture, but let's do best director now. Uh, we're gonna read off the nominees. Kyle, I think it's your turn. I think. Yeah, sure. All right, best director. Best director, Thomas Vinter Vinterberg. Uh, <laughs> another round. David Fincher, Mank, Lee Isaac Chung for Minari, Chloe Zhao for Nomadland, and Emerald Fennell for Promising Young Woman. All right. What do you guys Did I got? get all those names right? I think, I think that's so. pretty darn close. Pretty good. Yeah. We did it. I'll start with our dark horse pick from the good, the bad, the watchable. We select <laughs> Lee Isaac Chung. And then we're moving on to our will win, which I think is a lock right here. Chloe Zhao. 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 All right. Chloe. Director of Nomadland. Discuss. Oh, wait. No. You guys. Where your dark horse will go away because I know we're going to keep it moving here. Okay. All right. He's um, timing you guys. Yeah, he's timing us. Uh, I feel I pressure mean... now. I'm too worried. Um, we have one that matches, and I think it's the one that is going to win. Uh, Chloe Zhao for Nomad Land is our will win. Our dark horse, though, uh, we're going with a different film. We're going with the director of Promising Young Woman, Emerald Fennell. Um, I, could, I could see the Minari pick. Uh, but I think I think I think it's Nomadland locked up. It, it's it's going to be an historic year. I think it's going in our picks. It's going to a woman, and Chloe won the the DGA, the Directors Guild Award, and they have about a ninety percent success rate. They did get it wrong last year with Sam Mendes. Uh, they got him wrong. Uh, DGA picked them, and well, we know what happened at the Oscars, but. Chloe's also won the Golden Globe, Critics' Choice, BAFTA, all these other awards. And I believe there's no other wins for anyone else in the category when you look at director <laughs> stuff. So, all right. There you go. Uh, yeah. I don't have much to add. Um, I don't know. Does anybody have much to add to this? I do want to add. I, now, we all really like Promising Young Woman. Yeah. However, I think. I'm not sure about their chances with this award just because mm-hmm. I think the direction style was so out of left field so different so like we we liked it but i think that kind of counts against it for something like the oscars where they're like oh you you directed the wrong way they're like no it's a new way it's something (laughs) exciting like let's try to mix it up like that's why everyone was so responsive to it so good and but i could see you know these as we talked about before the old uh uh people the academy like voting on this they're gonna be like no they directed mm. this wrong we're not gonna yeah. do this kyle uh any you gonna put any uh little little kashish on uh 10 to 1 odds for david fincher at all no not at all <laughs> no I, he, he wouldn't it's watch mank director. guys he wouldn't watch mank no i, I wasn't he refused i i'm not i'm not doing it i'm not <laughs> doing it <laughs> i i was listening to a, a podcast today and i will say not for mank but it is a 
it's messed up that David Fincher does not have an Oscar. It's it's, yeah. it's well, messed the big up. Picture, Dave, right? Yeah, the big picture. I was listening to that today, yeah. and because they're, they're redoing yeah, the uh, t- 2011 Oscars, which was the year that the King's Speech won over the Social Network. Th- that is ridiculous. that's still somebody yeah, should be in prison for that. Yeah, thank someone. you. I'll go back and listen to Kyle go off about that. I love it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. So, and. Yeah, so I, I don't think it's it's here for Mank, even though Mank is leading in nominations with ten. I, I don't I don't think it's gonna be a good night for Mank. We this is the first time we really have mentioned Mank in the entire podcast. And then if you look at the other nominees, uh, I haven't seen another round yet, but it was kind of a surprise for that director to make it in this category and to not really be anywhere else except for the international film. Probably not the greatest sign. Um you know, you don't have that much support across the entire Oscar voting body. So that's why we're leaning towards uh, what we were. But I thought that was a weird placement. I didn't really understand why that was put there. Oh, Thomas Vinterberg? Yeah. Yeah, I wonder For who he stole round. a spot from. Yeah, yeah. I mean, mm. a lot of people on the day the were talking about that Gina movie. King. Like, it wasn't the direction. No. It was the acting. Yeah. It was like, oh, you're thinking big deal. Yeah, story. they were saying Regina King might have been the one. That's that what a lot of people were talking about on the day was like, oh, Regina King could be here. You know, it, love him or hate him, but a lot of people thought Aaron Sorkin was going to be in here after picking up a lot of other nominations along the way. But uh, yeah, not there. And we now have one category to talk about tonight. The last one, we'll spend a little bit more time on this one because there's a lot to unpack. There's eight nominees in this category. Uh, what is our best picture nominees, guys? All right. We'll, we'll go three, three, and sure. two for Boyle. All right, nominated for Best Picture, The Father, Judas and the Black Messiah, Mank, Minari, Nomadland, Promising Young Woman, Sound of Metal, and The Trial of the Chicago Seven. Guys, who are your dark horse and who is your Will Win? All right. My grandpa, so. Let's just rip the band aid off for Will Win, Kyle, because I don't think that's a surprise. Yeah, I, yeah. Okay. Do you want to say it? No, you, you go ahead. All right. It's so our will win. in 1984. Yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get this out. <laughs> right in. We're right. It's a right in. <laughs> um, we're going to go with our will win. It will be Nomadland. Um, personally, uh, I mean, I just think it has so much momentum. Uh, sorry, I, I'll wait. I'll hold off on the description. So that's our will, will win is Nomadland. Do you want to tell them what the trial or the dark oh, 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 oh. <laughs> no oh, yes ah <laughs> uh, so our dark horse uh, I, I, our trial in chicago seven is yeah. dark horse all right yeah. Yeah. is that so, what you wanted to hear yes yes okay so <laughs> well, yeah, for us here, <laughs> this <is what> here. <laughs> for us here i know i know there's been a lot of uh discussion about the trial of chicago seven um i think this is kind of like a a safe pick I feel like this is the pick that the old Oscars like, the, the Green Book Oscars, the Shape of Water Oscars. This is the Trial of Chicago 7. No Man Land is the, is the favorite right now, I think, across the board. It's, it, I have so many stats I'm going to get into, all the different reasonings why. I'll run through them quick so I don't bore you guys later. But I think it's, you got those two films, and now we, we were going through the list, and it's like, I just don't see The Father. I just don't see Sound of Metal. I just don't see Judas and Black Messiah. And then you start crossing them off, and then it's like, as Mark mentioned, uh, Promising Young Woman, it'd be, it'd be a bold pick. It'd be polarizing because that's one of those films where it's like you either love it or you hate it. And I don't know sometimes if they can win Best Picture, but I'm very curious now as after I said all that, where are your guys' picks for Best Picture? So our, our, dark, our dark horse at 13 to 2 odds uh, in Vegas is The Trial of Chicago 7. Mm. That's, that's their dark horse. Yes. Wait. And our will win will at one to five odds, meaning you have to bet 500. No, no, no. That in the Google document is wrong. The email was. Mind blown. Oh, sorry. <laughs> oh, Boyle didn't know. You didn't know? Yeah, we have Nomad Land as our will win. Shuck. No, sorry, bro. Live on the podcast. Boyle, Live. what do you think it was? <laughs> the deception. Oh, Boyle the fake out he selected here. Trial of Chicago 7. Uh, as our will win and Nomad Land as our dark horse. But I oh, switched you switched the email to John. I feel like I wasn't even present tonight. <laughs> <laughs> like, is, that my, is my phone different? I didn't know either. 
Well, congrats, guys. We're, 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 no, I don't agree. I, I, I don't think the trial of Chicago 7 <laughs> is going to be up there at all. But you know what? I was telling them, Dave, that yeah. tier voting that they do. where you Yeah, the tier, the tier, yeah. You know what? Uh, Nomadland's my favorite. Or Promising Young Woman's my favorite. But a lot of people are like, Trial of Chicago 7 was good. I watched it on Netflix. All right, that would be my number two pick. Yeah. Those first that, two movies don't get the majority, and then what mm-hmm. happens? Yep. It's the preferential ballot it. that really – kind of messes things up it's so it's a film that's why i kind of threw out promising young woman because it's like yeah there's gonna be a lot of people that have it at number one on their list but then there's gonna be a lot of people that have it at number eight on their list so that's why you need a film for best picture sometimes it's number three four or five on your list it's the film that people mostly like um so that's why we kind of went with the dark horse of trial of chicago seven and uh it, it did get sag uh the one thing like if you look at last year's race, um, 1917, Producers Guild, Directors Guild, it was picking up stuff, which No Man Land it has right now. But then it lost to Parasite, which did win the SAG Award. And SAG is the, the largest branch at the Oscars. The acting branch is the largest branch. There's the most people voting. So that's kind of why we, we, we threw that one in there as our dark horse. But it's no man land, right? I mean, it's no man land. I, th- I think there's blatant disrespect for Judas and the Black Messiah mm. here. I think that movie mm. is gonna, has a lot more steam than mm. everyone here thinks. That's yeah. possible. I think it was far better than the trial of Chicago seven, far better. I thought the acting performances were better. The writing was better. The cinematography was better. That's a very strong movie. I think it's going to, I think it's going to be closer um, to nomad land than you think it's gonna be one of those things i where really in, do in 10 years we're gonna think back and be like wow like daniel kaluuya and and, and lakeith sanfield were in yeah. that movie together and they were and we didn't and it walked away with what one win you know it so yeah but i mean other than that we were talking this is a big year of just a lot of singles and maybe some doubles but absolutely yeah. no home runs this year and nomad land feels like the okay congrats you won but mm. any other year that's not even being discussed i think i don't know yeah. yeah it's it was it's it's a different year i mean looking at my list i mean we've talked about our head picks my heart picks not even mention. i mean probably the top two that i liked of this entire list is promising young woman and minari then maybe after that is probably judas of the black messiah and sound of metal like and i even mentioned i think those, i have so. the same I like the like top, i yeah, think i have the, the same father. four as you yeah. like yeah. so but I'll, I'll run through the the No Man Land stuff for any stat fans out there. It it did win PGA. 65% of the winners get best picture. They've matched every year, except for last year and a couple of years before that. But they're usually pretty good because they share that preferential ballot. And they're the roughly the same size of the Oscars. It's It also has won BAFTAs, Best Film and Director. It won the same at the Golden Globes. It won Director. That helps as well, the Director's Guild. Um, but the biggest stat, the biggest thing here, 95% of Best Picture winners have a director nom. 95% have a screenplay nom. And 83% have a film editing nom. And there's only two films that have all three. Nomadland, Promising Young Woman. I'm not going to lie. I really like those stats. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> that was fantastic. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah. yeah. Could that be? That would be. Pro- okay. Real quickly. Promising Young Woman is the winner of Best Picture. We feel like I it's think we have transition. That, right? We've officially made the transition <laughs> to like newer kind of style movies. To the newer, yeah, yeah the new generation. You're headed by Parasite Be- and- because people have been yeah waiting for that kind of changeover. The the first hint at, at it was probably Moonlight a few years ago yeah. when that yeah. was surprised. But then it was like oh, well Shape of Water's here and oh uh, Green Book's <laughs> back and it's like oh wait we that was just a fluke. But then when Parasite surprised everyone last year, it's like, oh, maybe it wasn't a fluke. Maybe we're back. And so this will be a, an interesting year to see, you know, yeah, we, yeah, where are we going? Especially, as we mentioned, the pandemic has made timelines and everything so messed up that it's anyone's guess. But I will say, um, just with Nomadland, I thought the best part of it was cinematography. Mm. I mean, honestly, I thought yeah. that was the best part. Yeah. 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 Um, <clears throat> so... Those are our predictions. Those are our top eight. We're going to do a few other ones for social media and, and for the blog. You'll see all of our predictions. But what what is the loser going to do, guys? Have you guys thought about what the what are you guys going to do when you lose on two weeks? <laughs> I was just thinking about that. 
so because we've done the Razzie worst picture at least at least the uh, I know we did Gotti cats I know Boyle had to do the emoji movie as well I enjoyed that one. <laughs> I enjoyed that. Yeah. so Good. if we it's look terrible. at the main ones at the Razzies this is the worst picture we have 365 days absolute proof do little fantasy island and music but I will say I did like the hillbilly <laughs> elegy you might edition. have to watch music Okay, especially because it hits childhood. Like I love Doctor Doodle with Any Murphy growing up. I yep. think we got to do Doodle. If I can avoid seeing Hillbilly Elegy at all costs, I'm like, <laughs> I will say definitely. I've seen 365. It like not even. It's not even like so bad. It's fun. Like it's it's bad. It's and really you bad. Saw Fantasy Island. I saw Fantasy Island. Fantasy yeah. Island was very bad. Yeah. So we got to do what we all bad. haven't seen. Has that? Have you guys should seen be Doodle? I heard either, Doodle was because we're not ruling out right. like you're gonna lose. It's all right. Mm. No, I ruled yeah. it out. We're, I'm just basically picking my own thing. Here, the, the, so I think the one that would be the most fun to do. Have you guys Hillbilly Elegy? Is if we've all seen that or no? I have. No. I'm not gonna see it. I haven't seen. Well, it. Well, if, if you lose, yeah, I mean you're gonna see it. <laughs> 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 so I think that's. I think that might be it. I think that'd be especially oh, for this year. Where it's it's so. I think it's a it's good fair. one for this year. Yeah. It's all right. Well, be, Hillbilly I'll Elegy is, again. I feel like I'm picking my own. Thing. It's like yeah. you guys yeah. have me pick my own coffin out. Like, oh, yeah. Tough, yeah. I'm gonna have to watch Godzilla versus Kong like ten <laughs> times to watch There's that. Palette cleanser. I think it'd be interesting this year because it's like okay, well, this film is up for an Oscar and a Razzie, so it's kind of like <laughs> yeah, this... you could be watching Oscar winner and Razzie winner Glenn Close. So I think I think it has to be. Happen. He'll be an LG this year. So. <laughs> when you say it like that, Kyle, I feel honored to even be. <laughs> yeah, you know who else has done that? I'm pretty sure it's Nicolas Cage. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> probably. <laughs> All right. I, I have one more thing to that. ask you guys that's not Oscar related. I don't know if you guys saw. I'm, actually, I know you guys saw because you participated in it. We did a film franchise bracket. We Last week, we named the top film franchise. I want to get your quick thoughts on the winner, the final four, anything that we missed. What do you guys think of the, the bracket? I want to start off with, with Boyle. What do you think of the bracket and the winner? Specifically, War of the Mask for you guys tonight. Mm. This was the one I chose for you guys, for your bracket. Little uh, PR for you, and I'm very <laughs> mad about it. I can't believe Marvel lost. I can't believe it. Yeah. And not only did it lose, it didn't make it into the final two. Indiana Jones beat it out. Mm. I love Indiana Jones. And respect, and I chose them over. We're, gonna, Star Wars. we're just gonna have Indiana Jones slander. Like, <laughs> <laughs> what are we doing here? You, gotta, you, you have the counter argument. Like the Give the, but I stood up. I chose him above Star Wars. Which series has the Incredible Hulk with Ed Norton in it? I rest my case. <laughs> Indiana Jones. I still enjoyed that movie. I rest my case. I'll take my Crystal Skull and I'll go all the way to the championship. Right it's now. called Recast. I Which one like has Jar Jar Banks? Mm. Yeah, DC <laughs> did it so many times. Jar Jar Banks. I can't wait for five though. I'm very excited about the Indiana Jones, especially mm. since the fourth movie didn't count. So it I'm, I'm fourth. Yeah, yeah. I'm really confused about this fifth one coming up. First of all, because I believe uh, Harrison Ford is older for five than uh, Sean Connery was in three. <laughs> so and she, and then <laughs> in that film, Sean Connery was in that little motorcycle sidecar the whole time. So it's just like, what is Ford going to do in this film? And then you got Phoebe yeah. Waller Bridge from Fleabag, which I feel like is the completely different tone of Indiana Jones. But I, I, I love her, so it's gonna be really interesting to see the two mix. But here's the thing: we like James Mangold. We like James yeah. Mangold yeah. as a director. So I'll give it a chance. When you said, like, when the news came out and it said he'll be 80 years old when the film releases, like he's basically out, right? But especially when I read the director who did Walk the Line. That's what we're just saying. Ford v. <laughs> <laughs> we're literally just saying that that's the zoo that's we enjoy his work you know what i just that's said right. yeah. but i mean yeah. harrison ford is still flying planes into ground <laughs> you're gonna at, use that joke again <laughs> yes no but it was funny last week and it's funny again, it's funny again. again. because <laughs> is it, was it, it ever is. funny <laughs> it is funny because he's old <laughs> and he's flying planes into grounds that's all you need to know okay movies, okay a huge oversight yeah i'll rage quit yeah done right. do a scene, well, like this plane is going down he's like it's fine i've done this before <laughs> 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 all right. sorry, <laughs> sorry. All right. Well, oh, man. that is it for our predictions this week. We're going to have extra ones on, during the week on social media. Plus, we'll have the full list on the blog, doerdonc.com. When we come back next week without 
for Good and Bad and Watchable. We have some TV to talk about. We'll have Mayor of Easttown, which is a Kate Winslet HBO drama. Plus, Kristen Malati is starring in an HBO Max comedy, Made for Love. So yeah, I've been watching that. Uh, fantastic. Oh, all right. Uh, Early review. Yeah, I'm... <laughs> All yeah, right. I'm keeping it short like the uh, like the professionals do. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah, and it's good. You it's can, Sony. You can find episodes of our podcast on YouTube, iTunes, Spotify, the blog, com. Of course, live Tuesday nights on Twitch like tonight, twitch.tv slash duradonsi, 8 p.m. Eastern. And make sure you're following us on Facebook, Twitter, and, and Instagram at duradonsi to get those extra predictions. They're going to be on social media only. So definitely check those out. How can people check out The Good, Bad, and Watchable? Jeep, uh, we're on all podcast platforms. Check us out on Instagram, GBW Pod, and GBW Pod on Twitter and on Instagram. So uh, check us out there. We we tweet basically when the new episodes are coming out. We post on Instagram uh, what fans have been watching. So uh, send us messages on Instagram. We'll give you a shout out on the, on the show. And uh, thank you guys for having us on. Of course, of course. Thanks for coming on. It's always it's always a blast. I want to thank Kyle, of course, for joining. For John for directing the show. So many elements he had to do Woo! this week. But until next time, I'm David Allen. I'm John Berwick. I'm Kyle Bridger. I'm Nick Boyle. I'm Mark DeSisto. And I'm Nick Rojas. And that's all we got for Duradunsi. Goodbye, everybody. <laughs>